Scythes, wings, hammers, blades, claws, death, and a plague doctor mask. Does this sound like the kind of man that needs to cower before enemies? No. Corvus is not scared of the plague. The plague should be scared of him. So we're gonna strike terror into our foes by beating Thymesia like a true plague doctor. The premise of this run is simple. Make Corvus look like the reaper he is by standing up to our adversaries without dodging, parrying, or defending. Since I'm not allowing dodging, this technically disables the jump as well since you normally need to dodge into an enemy to activate it. Also, I'm disallowing the throwing daggers plague weapons since they make you dodge when you use them, but otherwise anything else is game, minus glitches. As Corvus's journey begins, we can generally just claw and slash our way through the initial section. The game says, oh you can dodge, but we don't need any of that, nor does it require us to do it. We hit a guy with an axe and learn about plague weapons, which are essentially temporary weapons we can spend energy on to use, and we can steal these from enemies until we fully unlock them. He's pretty easy, but the longsword enemy where we learn how to throw feathers is not so easy. Keeping distance from him and then throwing a feather, we can interrupt his attacks to get some damage in, and continue rinsing and repeating until he goes down. And that's pretty much where the game stops handholding us. We get sent in to fight Varg and get absolutely destroyed. We wake up in Philosopher's Hill and get the option to move to the first real area, the Sea of Trees. Going here unlocks leveling and we'll start by unlocking more and faster feathers. Reaving enemies and killing will sometimes grant shards we can use to level up plague weapons and in particular leveling the axe is good through this stage. While the reaved axe is only usable once, if we set a plague weapon to the beacon we can use it anytime we have energy. The standard enemies aren't too notable, just back away when they attack as Corvus isn't exactly a tank. At the second beacon, there's an elite who gives us the hammer, which we'll need soon. The strat for not getting hit by the big bonk is to walk away until he has a big attack and gives an opening, then jump in for a few strikes. Also, if he's doing a spin attack, you want to run in a circle and not towards a corner so you don't get trapped. If you can manage to reave him, you could use his hammer to stagger him as well and potentially get another shard, which you'll likely need to unlock the weapon. Make sure to have the upgraded feathers here, as the feather stagger on is critical is one of your best damage opportunities. After running through more enemies and reaching the last beacon, I backtracked to fight the throwing knife elite, who was also a bit tricky. Basically, you only want to attack her after her 4 kick combo, or you smack her with the hammer. And don't back away so much unless she's doing the 4 hit combo, as she'll tend to hit you from afar with the daggers. She's very susceptible to an aggressive playstyle and seems to stagger much easier with a claw attack, so also bonk when you have the energy till her health hits zero. We could also pick up the fists in the previous area to the beacon by keeping distance and interrupting with criticals. They actually died a lot to the spear wand than the other weapon holders due to the distancing. When you close in for damage, make sure they just ended the big attack and try to bonk out of it to keep them from dealing as much damage as possible. I also found that consistently hitting the critical interrupt seemed to be difficult on this one due to the distance away from the charge you are not being consistent, so generally you want the feather to connect right before they hit you. With these weapon holders out of the way, make sure you get the feather skill to recharge energy before going into big boss number one. The odor fight is our first major roadblock, with the big box stick being about the only way we have to induce stagger. I died a lot to this one. Getting a chunk of levels and skills unlocked is important, but specifically I'd say you need energy over 200, and for skills, max feathers and recharge time, feather hitting, restoring energy, and the short claw skill was my required setup. Since we can't dodge or defend, our main way of avoiding damage is just to back away from odor when possible. However, when he warps away and laughs, you should make sure to be strafing instead of just walking. For this, he'll throw cards at you, and dodging them is a matter of keeping enough distance and running to the side. After a few cards, he'll throw a set of five in a line, and during this, if you don't have enough distance while strafing, you'll definitely get hit. After three sets of these, the screen will briefly blur, and you'll get an audio cue, and it's important that you do not get hit by this, as it'll deal massive damage. But even though we've established how to avoid taking damage, we need to actually deal damage to win this. I took the bonk stick in, and that's gonna be our go-to. When he teleports nearby and does a set of three forward slashes, you can get a free bonk in. This does take 100 energy though, and afterwards we need to recharge by hitting him with feathers. Before throwing these, just make sure you're clear of any attacks, and if he does happen to stagger, you can continue throwing them till you run out of feathers. This is the only attack we can get damage in on though, and while we could do two slashes and two short claws instead of the bonk, there's a large chance you'll get punished for it, meaning this is gonna go really slow. Before taking his health completely out, save up to full energy and wait for most of your feathers to recharge, then deal the last bit of damage with the saber and claw instead of the bonk. 
This is due to Odor actually having a second phase in which his health goes back to full. You actually have two spots to get damage in now. One is the same three strike attack and the other is a new one where he teleports towards you, stay still and pulls his sword, then teleports and does a combo that you can't outrun. So we need to save our bonk energy to interrupt this attack and use the hammer right after he pulls his sword and begins teleporting. It's okay to be later than that, but this will cause him to get more damage in. I'd suggest using the Saber and Claw on his normal 3 strike attack to press where possible and be very aggressive with the feathers to keep your energy recharged. The final new attack is a red ultimate and if you're near him when this goes off, you're gonna get hit. So if you see him flash red, drop what you're doing and run out immediately. I pressed the end of phase 2 way more aggressively than I should have but did manage to just edge out a win against Odor with 0 potions left. Well that was a lot for the first boss of the game. Luckily we're given some relaxed time back in Philosopher's Hill and get to unlock a new potion type. There wasn't really much access to potion stuff before Odor, but the game has a cool mechanic where you have different potion types that confuse ingredients in to amplify them or give them new effects. We also now get access to side quests in the Sea of Trees where you can collect more materials and level up some plague weapons. I also thought I'd mention the throwing knife lady in the beginning since she gave me a lot of trouble at first. But if you push her back into the narrow alley, she should go down much easier. However, the hammer dude is really difficult to take down in this space. Getting the critical stagger with the feathers and stealing an extra bonk from him really go a long ways here. On side quest 2, we get more potion upgrades and run across a new weapon which is double guitar, and they proved a little troublesome. But using the bonk, we can get some new weapons. Not a lot else notable about this side quest, so onwards to the next stage. We get new weapons immediately out of the gate with a shield guy, bow guy, scythe guy, and a double sword guy. Most of these aren't that difficult to take down, but the twin sword user is another story and he killed me a lot. I had to play this one really slow and mostly rely on the bonk stick and reaving the double sword from him since they ate up a lot of his health. I'll take those shards, thank you. I also got stopped by the great sword user here due to his damage output. My first idea to take him down was to literally just throw feathers from this platform, but after standing for a few minutes and barely chipping his health, I decided I was too impatient for that. He is deceptively fast and has a long reach, so staying far away is good. I mostly tried to reload energy with feathers, then bonk instead of attacking regularly. I also found it handy to reeve and hit with the greatsword too. The feather critical interrupts also made for pretty good damage, but in the end, the bonk stink got the better of him. The game also introduced these ghost enemies, and while they did knock me out a time or two, they're pretty easy to deal with if you're just patient and rebuild energy for your plague weapon. This section also brought back the double Qatar enemy who was much more of a pain here. I'm not sure if it was the arena or the increased level that made this one so difficult, but I wound up in a routine of getting two slashes and two claws after major attacks, then backing away and playing really slow and cautiously. The final major roadblock in Royal Garden was this Blood Whip guy. Summoning him isn't bad as you can just strafe by his attacks, but he summons smaller enemies frequently and they seem to get faster as his health chips down. If you save both your reaved and standard plague weapon till the end and rush to the last bit, you should be able to get through. With the main of the stage down, we get to boss 2, the Hang Queen, and it was apparent quite early on that I wasn't going to be able to outspace this one like Odor. After trying to find any way to straight past attacks, I came to the conclusion that I was just going to have to take it down before it took me out. Since potion crafting was unlocked and I had two ingredients, the thought was to maximize health recovery on the long lasting potion. In theory, this would let me heal while tanking damage and hopefully outlast the boss, but I didn't have enough of them nor could I use them fast enough to secure victory. So I went back to level some. First aid would be an important skill since it automatically uses a potion the first time Corvus would die. The other thing I kinda figured out while grinding and getting scythe shards is that the scythe can heal you when dealing damage, and getting plagued to 10 makes that healing even better. So after maxing out the scythe and getting some boosts I went back in, and while it was better, I was still dying. The main issue was that I couldn't regenerate energy fast enough to use the scythe despite the strategy seeming viable, so I picked up Energized Claws level 2. With better energy regen and the scythe being maxed, we could more frequently double tap the plague button to get two scythe hits which both heal us. Add that to the potion regen and claw sustaining us and we are one tanky boy now. That's not to say that made this fight trivial. In the end, I wound up pressing and being extremely aggressive to keep regen up and knocked the health bar down after using my last potion. After taking down the Hang Queen, we get some more side quest. Side quest 1 is pretty straightforward. After sub quest 1, the game unlocks the God of Fools, and upon entering I was expecting this to take a while. And it did, but not because of the boss himself or the area being hard. 
I got up to the top near the end of the stage and just had no clue where to go, and trying to run straight through the gas kept killing me. After spending like an hour being a derp, I finally realized that you're supposed to stand behind the wall here to protect against the gas midway, and I felt like an idiot since this should have been a quick and easy area. Another interesting one was the underground laboratory. Things are a bit tougher overall, but the spacing made most elites much easier than the times I'd hit them before. That said, there is a boss at the end of this one, namely the Sound of the Abyss. The hit indicators make this one a lot easier to move away ahead of time, and I quickly realized for the sweeping attack I needed to stand in the little cubby in the wall. Besides that, there really isn't much difficulty with this one, and I'm not certain I really required any of our missing mechanics to begin with. And with that, I dove back into the main quest line, which took me to Hermes Fortress, and the most notable thing were the archers being annoying and the route being kind of confusing to navigate. After clearing out a bunch of disease guys, the boss from the game intro decided to show and I began attempt 1. While I could heal from Scythe here, Varg was definitely tougher to tank than the Hang Queen. The potion is once again the key for this boss, and I opted for Fennel, Oregano, and Mint for a balance of health and energy regen. Varg was similar to Odor as I discovered it was possible to simply outrun his attacks generally, though the one where he stabs forward in a large distance is tricky to outrun and you must be far enough away from the wall or you'll most certainly get hit. He also has some fairly nasty attacks where he slams, which you can actually just strafe beside them and be safe. Generally, you want to try to get your damage in after his overhead slam, and generally a 2 saber 2 claw combo is safe if you back away after. The main thing with Varg is his counter though, as it's a lot more unpredictable than Odor. If your health is mostly full, or you know he's doing multiple hits, then Hammer is definitely the way to go since it reduces damage taken and staggers him. But when health is low, Scythe was definitely more optimal so I didn't die from the incoming damage. All things considered, it still took me less time to clearing Odor just due to better gear setup. After knocking out Underground Laboratory Subquest 1, I cut my way through the first one of Hermes Fortress until I hit Erd. Erd actually forced me to change my loadout a bit, opting for the Scythe and the Twin Swords. Since the Twin Swords don't stagger, they haven't been very good so far, but they can actually stagger Erd. In the first phase, the strat is simple. Twin Sword when you get hit, then follow up with Claw. When your combo ends, back away and then swap the Scythe to heal if needed. Otherwise, you mostly want to hang away from her and try to press at the end of her attacks, as you can outdistance a lot of her moves. In phase 2, she actually has one of the easiest ultimates of the game to avoid, as she gives a lot of time and you can see the positions it'll hit. Besides adding this in the strategy, nothing really changes for phase 2. I played a lot more aggressively in the second phase since I generally saved most of my potions till then and got in that sweet second backslash to finish her off. The only other notable side quest is the mutated Odor one, and oh man, if you thought Odor was bad, this version we can't outdistance, making running away not an option. Actually, before we get into this one, let's go back to the very first level of the game in the Sea of Trees. The important bit here is that there's a hammer guy and now that we're powered up he's an easy KO. Taking him down gives us hammer shards and lets us max our hammer out for cheaper uses in a secondary attack pattern. The downside to this secondary attack is that it only staggers on the last hit but we still take reduced damage throughout the whole combo. Moving back to mutated odor now. Setup for this one is hammer and scythe and we're opting for a tank strategy. So mutated odor step 1, block then steal his weapon. Step 2, wait for a move and then scythe. Step 3, repeat until he gets distance and then trigger a potion. Knowing when to time your plague hits so he doesn't dodge is difficult, and missing and losing energy can cripple an attempt. As long as you don't rush and keep healed up when you get low, the energy regen from your potion and a few stray feathers should keep your plague weapons going. Once he's at about half health, he also adds an ultimate and generally got hit as there's not enough time to dodge it. Being more aggressive and trying to scythe primarily during his combo attacks helped a bunch here and was a lot of what helped push me towards victory. Well that's all the main and substage is done so one thing left and that's the final boss. And who better to fight than ourselves? Corvus can do everything we can except he can actually dodge and parry unlike us and he's got two health bars. While he can use every plate weapon he has the same reach and speed as us meaning he's quite easy to outrun and staggers just as easily. Additionally, when his plague weapons change, you can get whichever one he currently has, meaning it's possible to get double scythe or double hammer at times. It is annoying if he heals with the scythe, but you can easily step out of range. The most threatening attacks he has are the claw combos, but can be outdistanced if identified early enough. For a final boss, Corvus was actually pretty simple. If Corvus approached and I had energy to use a plague weapon, I'd either use hammer or scythe depending on my overall health. 
If there wasn't enough energy, then I'd run away and build up energy with feathers. While I did lose a few times, he was actually the easiest boss besides Out of the Abyss, and after saving most of my potions for Phase 2, Corvus went down. So what do you think? Did that run do Corvus justice, or do you have an idea how to make him even less afraid of enemies? Let me know in the comments below. This was actually my first time through Thymesia, and I have to say, I really enjoyed this game, and I hope to see another one from the studio someday. If you enjoyed this run, you'll probably enjoy my Remnant with only secondary weapons run I did with my editor, Pretty Chill, and can check it out here. I also have more upcoming content, so if you want to see more challenge runs that haven't been done, drop a follow or come over my Twitch to see them done live. I'm Glitch the Box Links, and I'll see you in the next Out of the Box Challenge.